Okay, so first of all, I have a table here with air samples in it that have been measured for a range of different compounds. Then in this table here, a small number of those air samples were re-measured for a few additional compounds. And I want to combine these two tables together. And I'm going to be showing you three different methods for how to do this, using a VLOOKUP formula, using an index match formula and using a power query. So the first method I'm going to show you is using a VLOOKUP formula. So I'm just going to move this table to the side to create some additional room. Then I'm going to start typing in the formula, which is going to be VLOOKUP and TAB. And then the lookup value is going to be this value here. And then I'm going to use F4 to put a dollar sign in front of the A so that when I click and drag the formula across, it will continue to look in this column here. Then the table array is going to be this table here. And I am also going to use F4 to put dollar signs around this so that this table doesn't move around. So at the moment, I am looking for this value in this table. Then the column index number is just the column number in the table. So this is going to be column one, column two, column three. And this is what column I want it to show the results for. So at the moment, I want it to show me what the sample number is. So I am going to put column one in here. Then for the range lookup, I want it to be an exact match. So I'm going to click false and then close brackets and enter. Now, if I drag this down by one row, you can see I get an error message. And that is because it's currently looking for sample one in this table and it obviously isn't there. However, if I drag it down one more row, it is now looking for sample two in this table, which is at the top here. So if I drag this down all of the way, you can see that it finds all of the samples in this table and it's lining them up with the samples in the first table. And for any samples that weren't re-measured, I'm getting a non-applicable error message. I don't particularly like the way this error message looks, so I'm going to get rid of this by putting an if non-applicable formula around the VLOOKUP formula. What this formula is basically saying is that if this formula here, the VLOOKUP formula, produces a value, then to use that value. However, if it doesn't, if it produces a non-applicable value, I want it to show something else. In this case, I don't want it to show anything. And in order to get it to do that, I am going to put two quotation marks in here with nothing in between them. So it will give me a blank cell. Then I can close brackets and enter. And when I click and drag this down, it gets rid of all of the error messages. The formula is still in these cells. You just can't see it. Now, if I want to have a look at the compounds, I can drag this across and change the column index number to two. And then I have this compound here and you can see its concentrations. Now, instead of manually changing the number every time, I am going to insert another row in here and put a one here and hold down control while I click and drag this across. Then I will change this formula here so it references this cell. And this time I'm going to use an F4 to put a dollar sign just in front of the one. Therefore, it will continue to look in this row when I drag the formula down. And now I have done that, I should be able to click and drag to fill in the rest of the table. And now you can see that the information in this table has kind of been spread out so it lines up with the information in this table. So that is the first method. If I delete all of this, 
I'm now going to show you how to do this using an index match formula. So this is going to be equals index, then the array is going to be this table here. And this will need dollar signs in it again. So the array doesn't move around. Then for the row number, I'm going to use a match formula. And the lookup value for this will be this. And this time I need dollar signs in front of the A again. Then for the lookup array, that is going to be this column here. And this is also going to have dollar signs around it. So I'm looking for this value here in this column here. Then for the match type, I'm going to have an exact match, so a zero. Then close brackets, and then we are back into the index formula again. And for the column number, I'm going to start off with column number one and then close brackets and enter. So you can see this works in a very similar way to the VLOOKUP formula, and I end up with the same result. Now I'm going to edit this a little bit. So I'm going to put the IF non-applicable formula around this again to get rid of the error message. And also instead of looking for the actual column number, I'm going to use this cell reference here and I'm going to use F4 to put the dollar sign just in front of the one, and then enter. And now I can click and drag to fill in the table again. Now I have the information that I want here. I can select all of this and copy it, and then I can paste it in the exact same place, but paste it as values. Now it will change all of these values from a formula to an actual number. This means I no longer need the row up here, so I can delete it, and I no longer need this table here, so I can get rid of that as well. I can also delete this column here with the sample numbers in it, because I was just using that to check the samples were lining up correctly. And now I have my merged table here. And then for the third method, I'm going to use a power query. Now, Power Query will only work with official Excel tables, so the first thing I'm going to do is convert both of these into proper tables. You can do this just by selecting anywhere inside the table, then pressing Control T and OK. And I'm going to do the same thing again here. And now I can just select somewhere inside the smaller table to start with and go to data and from table slash range. This opens up the power query editor and you can see we have the same table here. It's just now in the form of a query. I don't need to do anything to this at the moment, so I'm going to close and load to and then only create connection and OK. And now it has kind of saved this query in the background. Now I'm going to make this table into a query as well. And now I can merge the queries. I'm going to change this here to table two, and then I need to select the column, which is the same in both tables, which is going to be the sample number. I am going to leave the join kind as the default, which is left outer all from first matching from second. And as my table is quite small, I can already see the number of matches that I'm going to get and OK. And then it adds in a new column for me. If I select one of these values here, you can see that there is a small table behind it and that it has lined up sample number two in this table with sample number two in this table. 
and for any of the samples that weren't in table number two it's just showing me that the table is empty I now need to expand this so I'm going to click on the little arrows in the corner and select OK and you can see that it has expanded the second table and lined it up with the samples in the first table and that anything that didn't have a value is now a null value. I am now going to close and load this and it will add the data to a new sheet for me. At the moment, everything from the second table says table two dot something. So I'm going to change this back to the original headers just by copying and pasting them. Now I have the information I need. I no longer need this to be a query or even a table. So I'm going to select all of this and then go convert to range. This will break the connection with the query and also convert the table into a normal range. It still leaves the table formatting behind, however, so I'm going to get rid of that by going to clear formats. Now I can delete this column here with the sample numbers in it and I can also close the query pane here. And now you can see it's created a table for me that is very similar to the table that I made using the formulas. So in this video, I have shown you how to combine tables side by side in Excel. And that is everything.